Welcome to St. Charles Catholic Church, the Liturgy of the Word for the Sunday Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and and with your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us, and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. In those days, Naaman the Syrian went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of Elisha, the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was cleansed from his leprosy. Then he returned to the man of God and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, so accept now a present from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Then Naaman said, If not, I beg you, let there be given to your servant two mules, burden of earth. For henceforth your servant will not offer burnt offerings or sacrifice to any god but the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm has brought salvation. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead, descended from David, as preached in my gospel the gospel for which I am suffering and wearing chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which in Christ Jesus goes with his eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, shall, he also will deny us. If we are faithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, 
praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our readings today remind us of the importance of being grateful to God for all that we are and all that we have. The gifts, these are the gifts from God. What stands out in the first reading and the gospel reading is that those who thank God were Gentiles, that is, those who were not Jewish. They were outsiders. This underlines the fact that God's saving plan is universal. God has come to save all humanity, independently of race, religion, or social standing. And this includes the outcasts of society, people that may have made different lifestyle choices that we do not agree with necessarily. As we look within ourselves and see the hurts and burdens we carry in our lives, we begin to see that perhaps we are all that leper. In the first reading, we meet Naaman, an Assyrian general who is afflicted with leprosy, a skin disease that carries a social stigma with it. Naaman travels from Damascus to Israel to be healed by a prophet he heard would cure him of his leprosy. But the prophet Elisha, instead of meeting Naaman, simply sends a message telling him to bathe seven times in the river Jordan. Naaman is indignant. The rivers in Damascus are far nicer and cleaner than the muddy river Jordan. But despite his initial reluctance, Naaman obeys Elisha and he is cured. This leads Naaman to proclaim that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. From now on, he will only worship the God of Israel. In a gospel, we hear how the ten lepers who, upon seeing Jesus, shout from a distance, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. In order to prevent the spread of leprosy, the law of Moses laid down that lepers should live away from other people and should let it be known that they were suffering from this disease. This explains why the ten lepers did not come right up to Jesus and his group of followers, but instead begged his help by shouting from a distance. Rather than ignoring the prayer of the lepers, Jesus orders them to go to the priest and have their cure certified by the temple priest, as prescribed by the law of Moses, and to perform the rites laid down. Their obedience is a sign of their faith in Jesus' words. And in fact, soon after setting out, they are cleansed. However, only one returned to give thanks to Jesus, and he was a Samaritan, an outsider. This led Jesus to lament on the lack of gratitude for the other nine lepers who were cured. Gratitude is the attitude which leads one to a life of faith. The more we thank God, the more God grants us graces to believe, hope, and love. Make gratitude a habit every day of your life. Focus on what you have rather than what on you don't have. Make it a habit at the end of your day to look back on your day and identify three things for which you are grateful in that day, and then thank God for these. You will soon find that gratitude will become a norm in your life, and you will grow in faith, hope, and love. We easily complain about trivial things. Our car breaks down, our day is ruined by an unexpected repair, However, people without transformed dream about having a car to drive. 
It is so easy to forget how blessed we are. That's why maintaining an attitude of gratitude is something we need to do on purpose. Make a point to be grateful for the things you may otherwise not even notice. Those little things that bring joy and comfort, like a cup of coffee in the morning, or moving from stage four load shedding to stage three. All too often, our mind is so preoccupied with the past or the future that we overlook the now. As you begin to thank God for the seemingly small things in your life, it will help you focus on the positive and everything you have. As a result, you will also be much happier. One of the best things you can do throughout the day is praise God while you work. No matter what you're trying to build, your home, your marriage, your business, financial security, or even an exercise plan, you can worship God as you work. Bring your gratitude into God's presence by placing it on the altar at every Mass. Fix your thoughts on God. Thank God for what He's done in your life and give God praise for everything else He's going to do. We need to praise God because we love God. It actually draws us closer to Him, which helps us to hear God's Word clearly, receive it, and hold on to it through faith. Giving thanks through the day is simply a way to show God how grateful we are for who God is. Doing this regularly not only will help you to fully realize how God is working in your life, but it will also give you a new perspective. Your mind is renewed, your attitude is improved, and you are filled with joy. I find it amazing at how two people can have the exact same circumstances. However, one person can be negative, dissatisfied, and hopeless, while the other is optimistic and full of joy. Praise makes all the difference. Living life with a heart of gratitude for who God is and what He has done for us lifts our burdens and causes us to see everything in a different light. Gratitude helps put God at the center of our lives. Each moment that we've been given is a precious gift from God. We can choose to have a thankful attitude and live each moment full of joy, simply because God is good. And so I invite you now, in a moment of silence, to bring your gratitude into God's presence. Place it on the altar, where it will be lifted up to God and offered with the body and blood of Christ. Let us turn to the Lord now with all our needs and the needs of others in gratitude for the many ways in which he has already blessed us. For missionary men and women of faith who have left their homeland to witness the gospel to the gospel in all areas of the world, that the example of love and mercy will guide the church in examples of missionary discipleship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in prison and their families, that our prisons may prove to be places of healing and redemption. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we may always be ready to thank God for his loving mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the healing of the sick, the consolation of the dying, and the eternal repose of the departed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For South Africa, we pray together. Merciful Father, send forth your Spirit upon us, the people of Southern Africa. May we hear anew the voice of Jesus Christ inviting us to walk with him across the turbulent waters of our time. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, empower us to bring comfort to the restless, hope to those who despair, healing to victims of violence and reconciliation where there is division. May the Holy Spirit heal our families and communities, 
grant us ethical and courageous leaders who put the good of the people before their own interest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to speak the truth with courage, to act justly in all we do, to share with those in need, and always and everywhere to respect your gift of life as we strive to proclaim the values of the kingdom in solidarity with all peoples of goodwill. Hear our prayers, eternal God of love, and enable us to use gifts, the gifts you give us to serve you and one another faithfully. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray that beautiful prayer which our Lord Jesus Christ gave us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us, with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so we may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy of the word comes to a conclusion for this morning. We go in the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell icon. You will be notified of future updates.